everyone. This is going to be um, my thank you for 200 Instagram followers video. Um, this suggestion was given to me by one of my Instagram followers. I let them pick as a thank you um, what video I would do. And this idea, you know, at first I thought it was going to be a QA and a because a lot of people have questions. But then I got this really cool idea from someone who uh, sent me a message on YouTube. Excuse me. Um, sorry, they sent it to me on Facebook. Anyways, so she's trying to learn more about artist resins. She said every once in a while I should make a video about artist resins I have. Are they available? Uh, are they not available? How much were they if I know? And things like that. Who sculpted them? A way for her to learn more about artist resins. So I'm going to do that. That's going to be my little signature thing. Um, every either two weeks or, you know, I'll get on a little schedule. I'll make a new video and do about three to four resins tell you who they are, who they were sculpted by, are they available, are they not available, as many details as I can think to tell you about. This is my first time doing it, so I'm going to hope I hit some good points. So you can always leave me a comment below if I didn't tell you something or you think there's something you want to know, just tell me, um, and I can look into adding it in the future ones. I put some plastics in here because she also said I should talk some more about plastic molds I like, so I'm going to do that every once in a while too. Probably not every video because I don't have that many molds that I actually like. Um, but once in a while, I'll throw them in there. Also, if you haven't already followed me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. It's going to be Natalie's underscore collection. Um, I'll link it below. You can see pictures of models I already own, the details, um, my real horses, my real pets. You can also um, see things I have in progress that I haven't actually shared. Give me color ideas. I am able to chat more on there directly with people. And finally, when I do my giveaway over spring break, you can get an extra entry on Instagram. So go follow that if you haven't. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, Dante. Dante is sculpted by Sarah Mink. He's a stallion. As you can see, he's got really nice detail. Um, he's got, let's see if I can get this focused. Really nice body detail. Eventually it will focus. Um, he's got... Really nice facial detail. There we go. As you can see, he's got nice details in his chest. Again, in his face. And this is why I always say with artist resins, it's very important to get a good prepping artist. These details will get lost. And you can see more amazing muscling detail. The only thing different from mine is this Dante of mine has a different mane and tail than the one you would get from Sarah. The one you would get from Sarah has a flowing mane and an up tail. I have a version of that, but he's not here. So Dante, Dante is popular right now um, because he's one of the newer Sarah Mink horses. Dante was available from Sarah Mink in two different ways, a first come first serve and then a wait list. The wait list is finished, you can no longer get on it. Uh, she finished casting all the orders for that and already took the names. The wait list is harder because you don't know when you're going to get a chance to get one um, and you don't know, for instance, um, how long you're going to have to wait and you have to be able to pay as soon as you get the notice that yours is ready. The, a lot of people like first come first serve because you know yours is ready and you're going to get it then and when you pay, all that. So when you see Dante for sale, a lot of times they say he is sold out. Um, there's a little bit of a difference to that. With Sarah Mink, sold out doesn't always mean sold out. It's more like readily available and not readily available. None of Sarah Mink's are open for random purchase. You either have to get on the wait list or get a first come first serve. So what they mean is you can no longer get on the wait list for Dante. You have to wait. Like there's no way to guarantee yourself a copy. You just have to wait for Sarah to do a first come first serve and then you have to be fast enough to grab and pay for a copy before someone else, before they all sell out. So when they're saying he's sold out, what they mean is there's no good way to assure you're gonna get a copy from Sarah. However, you can still get a copy from Sarah at this time. She just sold a batch of them um, not even a week ago. She sold a batch of Dante's. I think there were about 10. Um, first come, first serve, you had to go to her site, use the little PayPal button, um, buy the horse and pay for it. So he's 108 postage paid, shipping included, in the price from Sarah. Like I said, if you want him, you know, right away and you don't, see, he's got really good hoof details. I'm going to try and show you. See if it'll focus. 
negative. Well, sort of focused. Um, if you want one right away, you don't want to wait and you want to be sure you get one, um, then the secondhand market is the way to go. If you would like to wait and get him at close to release price, then you can wait and get one from Sarah when she has them. I can't guarantee when she'll have another sale or if she will. I'm just knowing that I haven't seen her po post that his mold is exhausted yet. So that's Dante. 108 postage paid from Sarah. You can keep that in mind when you're looking for him on the second hand market. Oliver. Boy, do I get a billion questions about Oliver. So this is Oliver, a little classic scale full from Sarah Mink. Everybody loves Oliver because he has his little tongue sticking out. Um, everyone loves that about him. That's why so many people want him because they think his personality is so cute, and it is. Oliver. So Oliver was $95, including shipping from Sarah. Oliver was the same way. There was a wait list, and then she does them first come, first serve. Now the wait list is also closed. You cannot get on the wait list. You cannot guarantee yourself a copy. And as far as I know, all of those orders are filled. But she did post a message a few months ago that while she will not be casting any more Elsies, she did have more Olivers and that the mold was still going. Since then, you have probably seen three or four batches of Olivers being sold first come, first serve from Sarah herself at $95, postage included. So, when people tell you he is sold out, what they mean is there is no good way to know when Sarah will be offering them and to guarantee yourself one of those copies. You would have to be online when she posted them for sale and be fast enough to grab one. But is he totally completely sold out? No, because if at this time Sarah is still selling them and she hasn't made a notice that I will not be selling anymore. The thing is, nobody knows how many more of them she'll do or when she'll do them at all. So, another one to keep in mind, uh, right now I think a fair price for him on the secondhand market, personally, uh, I shouldn't say fair because everyone's definition of fair. If I were to get him secondhand, if I really wanted another one um, and I was going to pay a secondhand price, I personally would not pay more than about $140. Um, that's about my cutoff. I think $120 to $140 is about the max range. Like I said, he's $95 including shipping from Sarah. But there have been people who asked more. The price I tend to see them sell at most frequently is about $140. Um, the other ones can seem to sit for a little while. But like I said, it's because if you're willing to wait it out, at this time Sarah has sold a few more. And I think recently several batches have come in a row and that's why people have decided to wait because they've seen Sarah offering some batches for cheaper than the second hand. So people have been trying to wait and grab him. Uh, when Sarah goes a long time without offering a batch, you'll see his price start to um, inflate again because then he'll be getting harder and harder to get. Right after a batch has come down, it goes down a little bit because obviously then there's just been a bunch at that price. So that's Oliver. Like I said, you can't order one from Sarah directly. You don't know when there will be one for sale, but if you catch one from sale from Sarah, it's $95 including shipping. 95 or 98, I can't remember. I get lots of questions about this guy. This is Bosco by Morgan Kilborn. It's actually L in Bosco. Um, probably pronouncing that all sorts of wrong. I didn't do very well in Spanish. He is a Mustang Stallion. I don't remember the exact year he was sculpted, but he is not a t completely recent one. I want to say he was like a 2006 or something. It might not be that long though. Um, well, let's see. Let's see if it's on him anywhere. Uh, sometimes sculptors sculpt um, like the year and their initials in him, but I don't see it. Then again, I'm not looking very hard. So off right hand, I don't see it. Bosco, again, has a lovely face. What is my favorite thing about Bosco is that um, he's not a wild and crazy Mustang, but yet he has a personality that he demands presence. Um, so that's why I really like him. So Bosco is not currently available. You can see he has really great sculptural detail. Um, he's not currently available from Morgan. You cannot order him from Morgan directly. He's not available anymore. She might sell a second once in a while. I don't know that I've ever seen that, uh, but that's the only other way to get him. You can get him secondhand market. I see more of them painted for sale than I see unpainted. If you're on the hunt for an unpainted one, you're probably gonna have to post an ad 
and wait a little while. Um, for a while there, I saw some unpainted ones come up, and now it's been, you know, a good bit before, since I've seen another unpainted one. Um, there are a couple of painted ones on Model Horse sales pages. He was, I don't know the edition of his run. I think it was close to 200, but don't quote me on that. Um, he is traditional. As you can see, compared to Silver, he is a bigger traditional. So Silver's, you know, considered a taller traditional because of how high he is. Let me even this out for you. So as you can see, he comes up to almost Silver's nose, just at his ear tips. Um, I'm trying not to bend the can camera here anyway and give you a distorted angle. Very big guy. Um, not too big, but, you know, a very nice size. There's some wrinkles on his neck. So that is Ellen Bosco. If you can't find the big one and you want Bosco, there is a Biddy Bosco. Um, that's his name. And he's a mini scale Bosco. He's, you know, going to be mini, so he's going to be little. But he is usually cheaper, and you can find him unpainted usually more often. Um, he is not available from Morgan anymore, but I do see him on the secondhand market a good bit. Okay, and for the plastics, I chose to talk about silver because silver in OF or custom form is great. I chose silver because if I get plastic ones, I don't get OF anymore, I get customs. So I'm trying to pick molds that I think make pretty customs. I think silver makes a pretty custom, and here's an example. I think he makes a pretty custom because you can change so many little things about him and makes him look totally different. Um, as you can see in just this one, just his forelock and his mane right there at the corner has been changed. And it already changes him so much. He also has some fetlock hair going on down here. Um, but just those little changes make him look so different. And this is true for the silver mold in general. Um, I really like the front view now without that forelock sticking up in the air. You can change really little things about him and make a great mold. Um, you can change his leg positions, give him a new look. You can change his head, flip it up, flip it down, flip it to the side, um, change his mane and tail around, and you can have a whole new looking horse just with some little changes. He doesn't need humongous changes to look totally different. Granted, Silver does have some anatomy flaws, but I also like that for a plastic, he has good sculpting. I mean, he has a lot of detail that some plastics don't. Uh, he has some wrinkles, um, and I think it's even true on the plastic version, you can see. Um, I had my artist refine him a little bit, but even as a plastic, he has a lot of little details that you don't see. Some wrinkles down here, um, you know, nice muscle detailing. Let's see, really good detailing on his face details. Um, again, it's just a really pretty mold that I think Briar did a nice... Uh, I think it's Moody, did a really nice job on. And for a customizer, he's one you can play with and change just so many little things and make so many different looking customs. So that's why I really like him. Really think he's a great, fun mold, uh, no matter how many people think his shoulders and stuff are weird. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the idea. I love this idea. Like I said, it's gonna be my little signature thing. Um, leave comments down below. What resins do you want to learn more about? What resins do you have questions about? What resins are you interested in and you're not sure if they're available from the artist or things like that? Post below. Um, I will try and add them if I have them. If I don't have them, I'm probably not going to do them because then I won't have anything to show you. Um, I'll try and get better when I get unpainted resins on using those and staying current with what's available. Thanks for watching. Again, follow me on, on YouTube and on Instagram if you haven't already. And I hope you guys have a great day.